Welcome to Voices of the Ancestors, where we explore Georgian polyphonic songs and the women who sing them. Hello, welcome to this experimental episode recorded at the turning of the year. We reflect on the highlights and lowlights of starting Voices of the Ancestors in 2020. Our listeners joined us and share their dream guest ideas. The very first guest, Jen Morris and Nino Nanayishvili from episode 3, talk about the unexpected consequences of being on the podcast. Nino has a beautiful perspective on how the podcast shines a light on traditional musicians in Georgia. If this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, I'm so glad you found it. If you can, I propose listening to episodes one and three before the rest of this one. This episode is an experimental live. The sound is different to our normal episodes, and we hope you enjoy the interactivity between the guests and listeners and appreciate the varied sound from around the world. So welcome, everyone, to our first ever live podcast recording it's a little bit of an experiment but here we are on zoom um with a live audience and some special guests who you're going to be hearing from very shortly um but to kick off i think we'll hear from me and susan i'm here in oxford and susan where are you so, so I'm in Tbilisi, Georgia, um, which is somewhat of a surprise, but a delightful one. <laughs> and we've just had Christmas here. Um, and, and we haven't. Yeah. <laughs> but I have got a Christmas tree. Well, actually, I've got two Christmas trees in my background. I've got the green one that you may be familiar with, and then one that I think is made out of hazel. It's like shades, and it's like these little squiggly things that... Um, yeah, a Georgian Christmas tree. So, and, and I'm told that you need to burn it so to get rid of the, the year, the previous year, and to sort of refresh the new year. So, I think oh. this, the end of 2020 may be a re really good year to actually burn that Georgian Christmas tree. Yeah, let's do it. Let's burn 2020. I like, <laughs> I love that tradition, like burning the old year and starting afresh. I think that's really yeah. nice. So, on that theme maybe we can start with talking about the year that's passed um so Susan what were some of your we're going to start with like low lights and highlights I guess uh, that's right yeah what, what, I'm just aware that we've got somebody else joining us who doesn't seem to have joined by the green room so I'm sorry I just I just admitted to our tech support that, oh, good. Well, can we start with some of our thanks and gratitude? Yeah. And that's one of them. What are we grateful for in 2020? Because I know we're both grateful for our tech support, aren't we? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, and in order to get this podcast started, we've had so much help from different people. So, Jen, you were invaluable right at the beginning for so many reasons, like going, try this piece of tech or what about Squadcast? And Yes, of course I'll be your first guest. Do you know how to podcast? <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm grateful to all of our guests so far for just taking the time to talk to us. You know, it's not like we pay them or anything to come on the podcast, but they, they're happy to take that time to talk to us. Um, so that's been something I'm really grateful for. And I think well, I'm also really grateful to our listeners because, you know, we had no idea right at the beginning. Would, would anybody listen to this? Was it just us that like talking about Georgian polyphonic song from morning, noon to night? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's really lovely to have this. And it's really lovely to have listeners who've supported us financially as well, you know, through Kofi. I mean, that, that's been a, a great thing. Because, yeah, I mean, look, here we go. Here's my, I'm going to proudly show my bit of kit, my Lavellier mic, which was we bought with the proceeds of people that have helped us. So that's been great. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's so true. I think because we've realised through doing this that we, we, Susan and I can very easily pour many, many hours 
into podcast making and talking about the podcast then producing it and advertising it and getting it out there and I I can't believe how many hours of my life I spent making this podcast but I love doing it um so I guess it's I'm I'm grateful and that I guess a highlight of my 2020 has been the podcast learning how to do it learning how to edit um sound and learning about sound quality and like different microphones big up johnny thank you tech support for that um <laughs> but then a low light has also been like learning that the hard way for example, <laughs> for example when i was working on zoe's episode my computer decided to delete the whole thing just before i was about to release it or uh, we've got Ashlyn and Miranda on the call right now. We had such a wonderful conversation with them. I think it was a few months ago now. And it was one of those golden conversations where they yeah. talked about some beautiful memories and it went on for hours and Miranda played the Chonguri. And afterwards I was so excited to start editing it. And I listened back and it, it was completely unusable, wasn't it? Yeah, I yeah, and I listened. And there was the, and my and my heart wanted it to be good enough, and I just thought, Ashley and Miranda, you have such distinctive voices, and so many people know your voices. And when I listened, the sound, I just thought, it hardly sounds like Ashley and Miranda. It's just not up to it. Didn't do you justice. So we, no. I guess. Yeah, that takes us on to what are we looking forward to? Oh, yeah. Which is re interviewing Ashlyn and Miranda with good quality sound, right? <laughs> yeah, solving the tech. <laughs> that's going to be, yeah, that's coming in 2021 for sure. Yeah. And as is an episode with Magda Kevlishvili, where again, it, it took us three goes to get the tech to work so that. At least I hope it worked. Have you listened back, Holly? Oh yeah, it's uh, we only recorded it yesterday. Yeah. Um, so I haven't listened back, but like I think it's going to be great, and we'll really. Yeah. Uh, we're planning to release that actually as a Christmas episode, but for Georgian Christmas, mm -hmm. which is really sneaky because it just gives me like a bit of extra time for editing <laughs> and everything. So thank you, Georgian <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Yeah, and thanks to Magda, because I mean, you know, she's, we, we, we sent her around town, she's tried from two different locations in the previous months when I was still in England, and then, and then we tried again here, and then, and then I got COVID, which was actually quite handy, because it meant that when we did record, we could be sitting side by side, um, and yeah, in Georgia, on a good Wi-Fi connection, and then Polly could be in Oxford, and it all magically worked, so that was fantastic. Yeah, and we've got loads of other guests lined up for 2021. And um, as I mentioned, like we spend, uh, we've realised like how much work it is to produce a podcast. And we were trying to do it when we started like every two weeks. Mm. Um, but now I think it would be more sensible to set ourselves the realistic goal of once a month. Yes. Potential bonus episodes here and there. Yeah. Um, so so who else have we so we've got Magda we've got uh Ashlyn and Miranda definitely gonna have Joan Mills right yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah in Wales in Aberystwyth who was really like at the beginning of this whole story so can't wait to hear from her on it absolutely and and uh, Nana Majavanadze, I'm very much looking forward to to interviewing Nana. So yeah, she's she's on the list. She's with, we're in communication. And and you were saying about sort of, sort of highlights, and I was thinking that's one of the my highlights is just that whole interaction with our guests before we even get into the recording studio. You know, not that we really actually have a studio as such, but yeah, just just you know finding out a little bit more and chatting and. And, all, and finding out what their concerns and worries are, because not everybody likes to, to sit and talk and be recorded, especially if it's not in your first language. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so for me, you know, going through that process and working out how people can feel most at ease and, and give up their best has, has been a great learning. Yeah, and um, we, I, I, we were talking about who our dream guests might be for the podcast 
and we started with like wild dreams of Kate Bush and uh, <laughs> Katie Melua, who's maybe not such a wild dream. I mean, she is Georgian and, you know, active and maybe one day that could happen. Maybe. <laughs> and then, uh, but then I, I was thinking of a, actually my dream podcast guest would be a uh, grandma from the village that Nino's been working with this year. I'm sure Nino can tell us more about it in a minute, but to be able to have some, maybe an interpreter or something um, so that we could communicate with those wisdom keepers. Mm. Yeah, I think that was my dream as well. When I, 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 I kept thinking about it and thinking about it and I thought, no, I think my dream guest is probably someone I've never even met yet, but that somebody who's in a village somewhere that's been keeping that, that knowledge and they may nobody else in the village may even know that they have that knowledge um but that I think that's my dream best guest to find that person and and, and just tease out a little more about yeah what having that knowledge and whether they're able to share it or or, or what it's meant to them mm, yeah for sure speaking of Georgians I can see that Shotter is in the waiting room should we let him in oh yes is he your Shotter from Oxford <laughs> yes yeah aha so good bridge there. Um, yeah, so I, I'm, uh, we're curious to know, like, our, our audience's dream guests, who would you like to hear on the podcast? Um, so maybe have a think about that. Is there any lowlights of your year, Susan? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm really grateful to the podcast because otherwise I wouldn't be in Georgia at all. True. But getting COVID in Georgia, it wasn't the best week of my life, shall we say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was kind of worrying. And you know, I'm 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 out the other side, which is great. And and yeah, I I feel like I'm back to normal. Um and Philip says, yeah, I'm now just walking half as fast as him rather than really really slowly and like three quarters of the past of him so yeah I think I'm kind of back to normal but it, yeah it was, it's kind of worrying when when you're d you're dealing with people on the phone who are going what do you mean you don't speak English do you speak Russian no we can try English or French nope just put the phone down and, <laughs> and then you get another phone call in a couple of hours and it's very caring and considerate and trying to keep an eye but yeah you know a little worrying <laughs> I'm so glad that you're healthy and out the other side of it. Me too. Yeah. Here's to a, a healthy 2021. I'll drink yeah. to that. I'll drink my mulled tea to that. Cheers. Mm. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to developing the podcast, I think, in 2021. And like one thing that we touched on earlier was about the Kofi which has been great um for like little bits like like you said about the microphone but we're also thinking how can we make this sustainable and like if people do want us to continue I mean I want to continue making it I don't know about our listeners if they want us to continue making it It'd be great to know <laughs> if you do um but how how can we I guess how can we make it sustainable like uh in terms of money like I don't we don't like the word monetization it feels a bit dirty but if we were to bring on like sponsors or something who would you who would you want to hear from I guess halfway through a podcast episode what kind of advert would you be not annoyed to hear <laughs> That's what I'd like to know from our listeners, actually, because one day we might get to that stage of um, someone wanting to give us money to, to put time into making this. Um, so it'd be useful to know that kind of thing. Like, yeah, what kind of sponsors would be good sponsors for Voices of the Ancestors? Yeah, I've just I've just read a message. Ashin, thank you for putting your your dream guest in the in the chat. That, that's so cool. Um, and when we get to that point, we can we can visit that. I think. Um, oh, there's lots more ideas arrived now. <laughs> oh, this is death. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, great. Okay. Let's, so, so is there anything else that, that you wanted to say, Susan, before we hear from our guests? I, I, I'm sure there's people I wanted to thank for that sort of gratitude, because right at the beginning, we started keeping a list of people that had helped us. So, so I know, um, you know, before we even had a logo, I mean, your friend helped us by developing something and Hazel, Lydia, my, yeah. my daughter, will put some time into it. And just those two people, you know, putting different visual things out there. So we actually had something at the time we needed it so that you didn't just put it, the podcast up to SoundCloud with a sort of white square. It's great. <laughs> it would make such a difference, doesn't it, having a good logo? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Yeah, and, it, and it's nice that the, the symbol of Borjali has been recognised by different people. And they've gone, oh, yes, and I'm sure Nino was one of them. who kind of went, well, you just knew just what it was and, and what that symbol meant, that, that sort of eternity, that idea of eternity and how that works with voices of the ancestors. So... And I'm, like I say, I'm sure there are other people on that, that list that we haven't said thank you to, but if, if we missed you off, thank you for whatever you did. Thank you. Whether it was giving me a biscuit when my sugar levels have gone low or, or whatever. Yeah. And, and the, um, I guess Teo at the Conservatoire and Hatuna at the Batumi Festival for like Absolutely. putting that, that launch, I think, was so fabulous in October to really hit the ground yeah. running. Yeah, that was wonderful. And what I would like to know from our guests who've been on the podcast, that's Jen and Nino, like just what impact it might have had on you and have there been any unexpected um, interactions since we've released the episode or, yeah, just how was that experience for you? Looks like I sh we should be unmuting Jen to me and then first and then perhaps going to Nino. Okay, let's hear from Jen. <laughs> um I got a, a very surprise I've had some very surprising interactions with a lovely woman from Belgium um named Ellis Pauls um she's been sending me voice messages over Facebook Messenger and she'll tell me like how the weather is that day but then also uh, I, so we we became Facebook friends but we didn't know each other um, and at some point I wrote her and said, so it seems like the things we might have in common are Svanetti, maybe there's an interest in the mountains and old tra traditional singers, and maybe you speak Dutch, but that's all I can figure out about you. <laughs> like, who are you and where do you live? And so we've, we've had this exchange back and forth and it, it all started when, um, I mean, I wrote her that message, but then after that, she listened to the podcast and listened to my episode and then um, just commented. And then we started getting to know each other. And I've never been to Belgium. I didn't know I had a friend in Belgium, but now I do. And it's all thanks to um, your podcast. So, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the worldwide connections through Georgian music that I already felt were so big and interconnected somehow are bigger and more connected than they were in 2019 so okay. um, yeah so not everything is to be burnt about 2020 then no there have been some really good things I mean the fact that all here we are we in Oxford Cambridge London Tbilisi Seattle the fact that we're all here meeting together um which we never would have done we could have done before yeah but we 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 wouldn't have done um yeah. that's just amazing so cool yeah not everything not everything about 2020 needs to get burned down maybe save oh. a little bit of that tree season yeah I can't, I'll save <laughs> <laughs> Can 
And I want to know from Nino now if she's had any unexpected connections or consequences of being on the podcast. Can you unmute Nino? Oh, yeah. Oh, now uh, I want to say, uh, first of all, that it's a, a brilliant work to start um, this unusual um, meetings. And um, it uh, it feels for me uh, something very old, what I remember just in my childhood when my grandma listened to the radio. And after her death, we uh, lost this radio and didn't use it. But this kind of podcast reminds me this mood when we feel from the radios, information and music, mostly it was music, uh, sometimes old music, sometimes folk, classic, everything. But uh, for this time, it was not so um, popular in Georgia TV. And also it was uh, uh, city war here, as I talked about 90 years, 1990s. And uh, uh, it was impossible to have electricity and to have TV shows as today. And uh, just radio sound and the music on it and talking uh, in different, um, about different things, it was just one uh, source for us to hear something different uh, uh, after our family. And I think uh, it's... Uh, a really brilliant window this podcast uh, for whole world now it's a different uh, situation in Georgia also a little bit better than it was and uh, uh, we have all possibilities internet and TV programs and everything but I think uh, this idea of podcast and uh, this uh, frame has something very cozy inside and very warm what we uh, what I think not everybody can catch what it means. And it's something very valuable and uh, so intelligent. And uh, I think uh, we will um, see it in future, how big work it uh, will be. And uh, thank you to invite me as uh, one of the guests and one of the first guests. It was big responsibility and uh, I was so proud. and. Also now, I'm so happy to be with you. And uh, I received uh, uh, two um, uh, email uh, from, uh, from uh, Australia. It was, uh, it seems that uh, this woman uh, knows about Ialoni and not uh, meet face to face, but she uh, wrote me so interesting things about this uh, podcast interview. Uh, and she said that it was absolutely different records to view how Georgian singer can uh, think and can uh, talk about uh, past um, and uh, about ancestors and uh, yeah, it, it was surprised for me because um, I didn't think that it was so spread because it's just to begin uh, your work. And I was so, so happy. Of course, uh, today I um, watch uh, uh, the um, like, um, winner writers. It was project in uh, Georgia, a brilliant project, Saba. It's so pity that it's not translated and it's without titles, but it's every year this uh, company uh, uh, do uh, like uh, events and uh, for different genres in literature, they uh, congratulate uh, writers and poets and um, it was very nice for us that uh, for Georgians, it's not like a behave to say nice words uh, to each other when they are alive. And it was so uh, very true thing because we had one very nice writer 
younger, um, not young, but uh, it uh, appears just now, 70 years old. And he was so, so happy to hear that uh, his writing is so valuable. And he said that it's just one thing what makes me happy to continue to write and work. And I think uh, your work also, Susan and Holly, it's a, a big, uh, it's stimulated so much performers and uh, music lovers and singers and everybody. And it's so um, kind, so kind to work for, for the world, not just for me and for Jen and for somebody. And I think it's the work what, uh, can and must be um, always to be in our environment and be with us. And uh, yeah, it's, it's very uh, special uh, feeling for me. And thank you for this big gift in 2020. <laughs> well, there you go, Susan. It's our job for life now. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> well, we're gonna have, we'll have to find a way to make it work then. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Nino. Thank you. Yeah. So, I think on our list of dream guests, Ash, Ashlyn was the first to, to write it down. So shall we invite Ashlyn to read his out? Yes, yeah, so let's hear from Ashlyn and Miranda who are in Cambridge. Welcome to you two. Yes. We uh, remember meeting Andrea in... 2002 okay. is our first time and we've seen her from in quite a few symposiums in there um, with or without her babies or now big boys and uh, I just think she's um, such a brilliant singer um, and has brought a lot to the, to the level of foreign um, Given that's a very high, uh, um, high bar to try and uh, reach. <laughs> this is Andrea. As, as non Georgians. Oh, non Georgians, yes, I was yeah. non Georgian. And uh, she's really very good. Andrea Kuzmich, <laughs> like, I think lives in Canada, right? Yes. She, she lives in Toronto. Wonderful. Well, we'll add her to the list. Yep. So that we will. Now, Jeff has written a lot, <laughs> but I think we should invite Jeff to read them out. Yeah, let's hear from Jeff. I'm loving your suggestions in the chat, but please do read them out for our listeners. Yeah, I'm not, I guess the main thought is really, if you're doing all the interviews and in there's not that many people who are the kind of people you want to talk to, who can really express themselves well enough in English. Uh, there's some, uh, but if you start, you, if you work out a way to uh, use a translator, then uh, there's a world more of possibilities. Yeah. Um, yes, I wrote down lots of ideas. I mean, there's Helen Chadwick is another one in the UK who is very important in the in the history of Georgian music in the UK. Yes, so there's um, Tama Buadze, who leads the choir Tutacella, um, is a really, uh, she, she's very impressive. So I'm looking, I'm looking through the chat, Holly, and, and Therese, Therese has, Lander has put lots of lovely ideas, but, but doesn't feel comfortable reading them out. So are you happy if I just read, them, read through them? Yeah, I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for joining us, Teresa. It's really nice to have you. Yeah. So her dream guests are Nina Chandler, who brought Georgian singers to Bristol in the 1980s. And, and just so you know, Tracer, we've already been in contact with, with Nina and something will happen at some point, which will all fit together. Um, and Joe Hale and Sheila Wilkins, ooh, um, who are the other members of the trio Kfiria who sing with Nina Chandler. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Anthony Johnson from the Bristol Georgian Choir 
Okay, so I think they're, they're all of Teresa's suggestions. So that's lovely, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Teresa. Wow. And there's a couple of other things in the chat that I think would be worth just um, mentioning, um, which is not dream guests, more ideas for sponsors, potential sponsors. Oh yeah, um, let's hear them. So one was from Shosha, who suggested that the Georgian government should get involved. Oh yeah, um, <laughs> I'm well, just dream. be happy, he says to sponsor. When wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> um, and then Johnny has got, oh, there's <laughs> Shotter on the screen. Oh Let yeah, Shotter, I'll hear from you, hello. Oh, hello everyone, yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> um, I think, uh, yeah, I put the Georgian government because the, you guys are doing the crazy job. I mean, it's uh, so, so nice to hear, like, uh, that you're promoting not only like the folk music, it's about the culture and it's about uh, about the Georgia. And, uh, I'm I'm uh, like uh, I was working for Georgia like almost 10, uh, 10 years for, for Georgia government. And, uh, I'm sure that this will be the best uh, kind of uh, you know marketing or advert or like, promotion or whatever you say like of the countries to kind of uh, uh, to, to 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 see how nice 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 people smiling, very positive energy, doing a <clears throat> great job. And um, yeah, I'll be happy to com communicate back to the country and uh, see what we can uh, do, what will be kind of, uh, yeah, the way uh, to cooperate, I guess. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm very excited about this and supporting the, the project uh, as well, which is, which is very, very nice. Oh, thanks, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. But it kind of leads on nicely to the suggestions that Johnny made for the sponsors, which was about this is this is imagining a world in the future where travel is possible and you can stay in hotels and meet people. So imagine that world. I know I know it feels a little difficult, but it's there somewhere. Um, so I, ideas for Georgian hoteliers or restaurateurs or tour guides or translation services and language teachers and music teachers and instrument classes um, and Georgian businesses based in the UK and Europe and USA. So, so I happen to know that there's a Georgian chain here that has op was opening its first, um, it's, it's a cafe called Pontier, I think. Anyway, so it's opening its first branch in London. So these, these companies do exist. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I want to have an advert for a Bakery, a Georgian bakery in London on the podcast. Yes, please. Entree, that's well, what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> will they send us free pastries? I wonder. Oh, <laughs> wow. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, great. So, is there anyone else that we need to hear from? Um, just wave your hand wildly. Oh, I, I, I can see Nino's put something. And Jen's just said, I have an idea for sponsors. Let's hear from Jen and then Nino. Uh, so just adding on to the idea of uh, earlier in the episode, you said, what, what kind of ads would you not mind terribly hearing in the middle of a podcast episode? Um, there's such great music, background music in your episodes and if there were a way to tie that in I mean I know you do say like oh this is music by Ioloni but if it if you um if there are a way to add in like more of um folk music recordings folk groups that are releasing albums now and say you know oh, Deep Gory has a new album Ioloni has a new album you know, that kind of thing um and then how can how can listeners um, support them as well? Because I know that so many of your listeners would love to support Georgian musicians and there's not really a good way unless you can get there to get the CD from a singer in person. There's not a really a great way for people outside of Georgia to, um, to get new music new old music yeah. <laughs> you I know yeah, yeah yeah so if there were a way to to tie in like a little bit of support for mm -hmm. the two of you for voices of the answers zesters but also promote georgian groups um mm -hmm. 
And then I don't know, maybe you add in the folklore center or the government or something. Some somebody who could add the money piece of it. But... Money, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yes, at, you've got you've got folk groups, you've got yeah. podcasts. None of these people have that much money. And then no, no, I know. I love that suggestion. Thank you, Jen. And such a big part mm -hmm. of why we're doing this is just to introduce people to more varied folk music folk music from particularly women in Georgia because I know I've had a few like radio programs or tv programs and whenever they're talking talking about Georgia and trying to introduce the music I always hear these big men's choirs and like you said in your episode that is needed sometimes there's a time and a place for that but sometimes we want to hear women's voices too so mm -hmm. for sure mm -hmm. we want to yeah, we want to get the support out there to the actual Georgians making the actual music. Yes, that is what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I'd just say to, to, to anybody listening, um, we have a website and it has a resources section. And, and there's a little message at the top that says, if, if you think you've got something that ought to be on here, then send us a message. I haven't had any messages yet, but, you know, if there are groups out there that have got some recordings on SoundCloud or Bandcamp or whatever, if, if they send me the links and the information, then it can sit in that on that resource page, which isn't it isn't what the whole entirety of what you're thinking, Jen, but it's it's a start. Yeah, great. Let's hear from Nino because she puts my dream guests mm. in the chat. Uh, yes, I wanted to just note that if you decide to do um, like uh, episodes about uh, our historical uh, singers, um, uh, women singers who was in the past very famous and uh, they did a lot uh, for Georgian music. It would be nice to touch also Megrelian singers, Elena Jubabria and Kionia Baramia. It's uh, uh, several recordings in the archives uh, from her uh, voices. It's, uh, amazing uh, recordings and also uh, it's a um, more contemporary singer but uh, she did uh, she create her own style of performing in contemporary Georgian folk music it was uh, Tina Joania uh, she was a member of Satana our uh, uh, teacher and uh, yeah, yeah very nice singer and maybe it will be interesting for you in the future that's a great idea thank you Nino I'd love to hear from Bernard because he's got some great suggestions in the chat. Perhaps Bernard could read them out or speak to them. Yeah, I, I just said I'd, I'd love to hear an episode with the Chamgeliani sisters um, in Spinetti. Um, I, I keep hearing little anecdotes from other people about yeah. about them. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, you know, I, I can talk a little bit with them, but because the my Georgian is not yet quite good enough to get the full the full detail of of some of um, some of their stories. I am very curious to 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 know more in depth. I have an idea about that, Paul, because I discovered recently, much to my surprise, that Mark Jackson's wife Irena um, was went up to Lakushki as the translator when they first started the Singing Village. So. Unfortunately, everybody, well, not everybody, but, but there are some people in Georgia who are much more concerned about COVID because the COVID rates are very high here. So, you know, the opportunity to, to meet with a translator and take a translator to, to Svaneti is, is probably just can't be done at the moment. But whether something could be done on Zoom or mm. who knows. Well, I can they're, think they're of, often in Tbilisi, though. I think. Yeah. Indeed. And I can yeah. think of a few of our guests, like Zoe or Nanam Javanadze, who are close yeah. to the Chimgalianis, who could help us. Yeah. So, is there anything else before we stop recording that we want to say? Or um, shall we go into our little informal chat? <laughs> well, I'm just going to mention two of the other wild suggestions, because they're just such oh, fun. Yes, I so, love our wild suggestions. So one, one is Ashlyn saying, the Mandili Trio. Oh, no, let's do it. <laughs> and the other is Bernard going, well, Anzor Echo Mash, really, of course. <laughs> and I, I think both of those suggestions are awesome. I mean, yeah, I wonder what would happen if we interviewed the tri Trio Mandili. Like, 
our, our listeners like might boost hugely because they're really you know viral on the internet yeah um I like I like this idea yeah and I, it is quite a wild suggestion because um they're not considered to be like a, a folk group really they're they're more like a popular they're sort of updating folk songs aren't they and they're they're sort of they film themselves often walking and playing pandori um in a beautiful backdrop with mountains in the background so that their videos get a lot of attention online so that and I think fun. one of the advantages of the podcast Holly is that, that we're not academics and, and we're not studying at the conservatoire so we can treat folk rules as perhaps more like guidelines I like it yeah there's no snobbery here <laughs> Thank you for listening to Voices of the Ancestors with Holly Taylor Zuntz and Susan Thompson. Our special guests were Jen Morris and Nino Nanayashvili, as well as our live Zoom audience. You heard music from Ioloni, Sakhioba, Tutachela Yugankor, and Tutachela. For more information about this and other episodes, and to read a transcript of all our episodes, visit voicesoftheancestors.co.uk.